Welcome drivers! Today we will try to determine the value of the driver brand in 2020. For that we are using a few of the last Ubisoft annual reports. What's that? Well, according to Wikipedia, it's a comprehensive report on a company's activity throughout the preceding year intended to give shareholders and other interested people information about the company's activities and financial performance. Why would the driver community be interested, you may ask? Because a few years ago, Ubisoft began to detail certain sections of its annual report better, including the brands. This section only covers the brands that Ubisoft has acquired in the past and not those produced in-house like Rayman or Assassin's Creed, so it includes the different IP of Tom Clancy and, of course, Driver that Ubisoft purchased in 2006. The time period of my analysis goes from 2016 to 2020. The first annual report relevant I'm gonna use is the 2017 one, however, because it's the first one that is detailing the brand section and we can see the net value of the driver brand since 2016 because it includes the previous year value as well in the figure. The annual report for 2020 was just released this weekend and it's only the French version for now, but that's not a problem for me. In the upcoming examination, I'm going to use terms like discount rate, market value, royalties method and more. I will try my best to explain them based on my personal knowledge and the definition given sometimes directly by Ubisoft in the annual report. I'm not a financial expert, so maybe I will say some things wrong, but I think we can still come to a fair conclusion about the driver brand value in the end. Anyway, if we only look at the numbers, it might appear at first glance that the driver brand lost almost half of its value between 2016 and 2018, but that big drop can be explained very easily if you read the reports more closely. Indeed, they changed the way they value the driver brand in 2018. Before, in 2016 and 2017, the market value was the basis of the recoverable value used, although the last game was released in 2011 and was already starting to be removed from the digital stores. Moreover, the evaluation wasn't made internally like the Tom Clancy and other brands evaluation, but instead it was an external assessment with a different discount rate applied. We may assume that the external evaluation may have over-evaluated the driver brand or simply that using the market value as the source of the evaluation process gives higher numbers in the end. But from 2018, Ubisoft used the same criteria to assess the net value of all their brands and therefore it could explain the big drop as it went from the market value to the value in use as the starting point to base the next step of the evaluation process. And the internal plan was the source for every brand this time. Therefore, it's only since then that we can really judge the variation of the driver brand figures. Now that the first step of the calculation are explained, let's see how the brands are evaluated in the annual report. For that, we have to understand what is the royalties method because it's the methodology that was always used to make the evaluation of any brand. Fortunately, this method was defined in the old 2016 annual report. The royalties method consists of discounting at a rate of 9% on the 5-year horizon potential royalties that will come back to the group if it concedes rights to use the brand to a third party, taking into account sales forecast of games based on the sphere of the brand itself. So it is sort of an estimate of the strength of the brands and not really if the brand is going to be used soon, but it shows the state of confidence that Ubisoft has in the acquired brands. Of course, if Ubisoft thinks that the royalties could be higher this year than the previous one, it also shows that they think the brand will be better suited to the market than before. Looking at all the remake, remastered and revival of old IP that many game publishers are revealing lately, it seems logical that the driver IP, if considered to a third party, could generate higher profit in return than before, at least in a 5-year forecast. 
Going back at our table, we can see that after a big drop which is explained by changes in the calculation process, the driver brand net value increased by 10% year on year in 2019 and 2.5% more in 2020. While it could be argued that this is still low, it must be stressed that during this time the Tom Clancy brand lost net value going from 42 million to 38 between 2016 and 2020. But without the same change in the calculation process, it's good to see Ubisoft thinking that the driver brand should not be devaluated but au contraire that it should be increased a little bit. Although this doesn't mean anything about the actual use of the driver IP, I would conclude that it is positive to see the value increase even without any news for years, indicating that at least in the forecast, the future of driver is brighter than before. I hope my presentation was clear, if not, tell me in the comments. I would like to thank my Patreons with the Road Builder Taras Coral and the Red River producer newer scenes from the SkyCC and the community website Driver Dimension. If you want to support the channel and get an early access to my videos as well, please follow the link in the description. See you soon, drivers!